That's My Line. Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the brilliant young star of the hit show, What Makes Sammy Run, Mr. Steve Lawrence. On my left, the very lovely Miss Arlene Francis. And now the return of the Count of Monte Kisco, <laughs> the squire of all he surveys, that charming random house panelist, Mr. Bennett, sir. in yonder chair, that potent prose prestidigitator, Ooh. whose name would take more than a half hour show can take, but part of it is John Charles Patrick Crowan Daly. He's got to have That is a remarkable example of the benefits to be derived from a memory course. Bennett's been working at it all spring and now far right into the time. summer. You yep. got it right, Bennett. Very good going. Steve, it's wonderful to see you again in that spot on the panel. Thank you very much, sir. After all, we sort of live in the glow of your great success with what makes Sammy run. It's nice to see you. Thank you. A very interesting program for you, some very interesting occupations. We will also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? C E Yeager, right, sir? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Yeager, will you tell us where you're from? I was born in Hamlin, West Virginia, and I currently live in California. Nice to have you with us, sir. May I present our panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? I think we uh, better let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that uh, Mr. Yeager is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Yeager, uh, does your service have anything to do with any form of amusement, entertainment, or sports? No, ma'am. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Yeager, would I ever use your services? Not at your age, I don't think. <laughs> You down and eight to go. Mr. Yeager, Mr. Yeager do you realize how I, I've aged? <laughs> you would not directly, personally, ever have reason to call on Mr. Yeager's service. Oh. Ms. Francis? Did Mr. Yeager give anything away then? Would Mr. Yeager's services be for younger men than Mr. Lawrence? So that's hardly believable <laughs> that there well, are say, any younger. I would say that properly, you correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Yeager. I would say that very properly, prob Bomb. Very probably, uh, the particular kind of interest in the service uh, which is conveyed by Mr. Yeager would center on Younger young people. people. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeager, do you work uh, with these young people? Do they come to you for your service? Yes, ma'am. Is there anything instructive about what you do, Mr. Yeager? Yes, very much so. Do you work out of doors? Both. Is what you instruct them in uh, something that has to do with their physical well-being? 
Not necessarily. No, I wouldn't so think much. so. We would expect them to stay in good health and in good physical condition, but this is not necessarily the direct application of the service which is conveyed by Mr. Yeager to the young people who would be interested in receiving the service. Now, you, finish, you just finish that sentence if it takes all night. No, I ran out of breath, <laughs> Bennett. I ran out of breath. All right, you're next. Uh, Mr. Yeager, does the service that you render have anything to do with babies? No, sir. <laughs> or not at six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Yeager, do you deal with school-age children? No, ma'am. Five down and five to go, Mr. What Lawrence. What kind of kids are they? Uh, can I, can we just have a short brief 30 conference? seconds for a conference. They're if it's babies. younger than me and they're not in school and they're not babies, what are they? Well, preschool. <laughs> teenagers. Preschool. Teenagers. Well, teenagers oh. would be in school. They they're delinquent. Yeah. Most teenagers would well, be in school. They're school age, anyway. I would say that if you had a span between babyhood and nursery school. Thanks a lot, Dorothy. Of course, the assumption opinion. here, Mr. Lawrence, is that you have your driving license. Hmm. Yes. Uh, and have had it for some time. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're a great help, John. Uh, would you uh, perform your services for both men, uh, or female and male? No, sir. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. You just do something in behalf of small boys. No, Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Is your service then performed for females rather than males, Mr. Ayer? No, sir. Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. John, how did we ever get mixed up with children in the first place? Because you're assuming that Steve is a good deal younger than I think he really is. <laughs> You've led us astray here, Mr. Davis. I have indeed. The question was asked, do you deal with children, was it not? No? And we All said right. no. no was... Well, I'm completely flustered. Do you deal with grown-ups? I would say they're grown-ups, yes, ma'am. You would say they were grown? Yes. Hmm. But, but somebody else might not? Is that what you're trying John, to tell me? Can no. we say that they're older than school age? That's right. The thing right. that we have been trying to convey to you is oh. because you stayed in the school area, we assume I Steve see. has been out of school for yes. a few years. He has yes. still gone out of that age group in which uh, Mr. Yeager would be He's particularly interested. He's an old married man with two children. We all right. know that. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, so you deal with comparatively young people, but they are past the school age, right? Yes, ma'am. And you instruct them? Yes. Do you instruct them in how to do something rather than just something cerebral that they should learn? Does it have any connection with any sort of mechanism? Yes. Uh, is it in any sense a vehicle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a vehicle which does not go about entirely on land? Mm -hmm. That's right. Does it go in the air? Yes. Do you teach people to fly? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I must say, Dorothy, I'm going to throw all the cards over because I think in probably general jump. phraseology, if I said instead of Mr. Yeager, Chuck Yeager, that would probably open up some memories in your mind. And if I said Colonel oh, yeah. Chuck Yeager, that it would open some more memories in your mind. And if I said the commandant of the Air Force's Space Pilot School, it would oh, open oh, all the memories well, in your mind. mind. <laughs> and John, you deliberately said, let us off in the babies. I like didn't it. do a thing of the kind. We didn't tell you to go to babies. Not a, not a bit of it. Just because your mind is always on babies, Bennett, don't hang it on me. <laughs> but if I also said that this is the remarkable officer in the Air Force who started out with the X-1 and who was the first to go through the sound barrier and who has done things that take your breath away in the air, then you'd know I was talking about Chuck Yeager, who is now commandant of the Air Force's Space Pilot School. By the way, what is, what is the, the Space Pilot School? Well, we take, we take Air Force officers who are already pilots and have a minimum of 500 hours of flying time in high-performance airplanes and have a degree in mathematics, engineering, or one of the sciences, and are from 24 to about 29 years old. <clears throat> and run them through our aerospace research pilot school, the first six months devoted to experimental test pilot training, and then the second six months is devoted to space training. So, 
So we, we both work in the air and above the air. So. Fifty years ago, you could have taken Daly back home with you. Yeah. <laughs> Bennett, I'll tell you something. When I was a, a reporter for CBS News, I went out and did the Cleveland Air Races, and in 1948, they had the first of our jet fighters planes that they could put two in, and Chuck was flying it, and I said I wanted to go over 600 miles an hour, and he looked at me like I had rocks in my head, being a civilian I was, and we went upstairs, and we dove, and we flapped, and we were doing 620 miles an hour, and that wing was going up and down like this, and I was scared green, but I had a wonderful ride <laughs> with Chuck. Oh, I haven't seen, I guess I've only seen you once since that, that right, ride. Yeah. 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 But a very, um, a very uh, great achievement to, for the Air Force and for yourself. And Chuck, thanks for taking time to come out from your duties to see us and watch my line. And thank, thank you very much. This, by the way, is the 10th anniversary of the Air Force's missile and space program this year. Now let's see what we can do with our second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Snooks? <laughs> Snooks Rook, is that right? Miss Snooks, not Mrs. Snooks. Yes. All right, yes. I think we ought to explain that uh, Miss Snooks doesn't like her real first name and she prefers Snooks and doesn't want me to tell you what her real first name is. Is better that right? Not. I better not. Right. And I will tell you, Pat, where are you from? Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida. And Snooks is still, well, actually, she's, in, she's going into college, but she has an avocation and uh, by it earns a good deal of the money with which she gets her education. May I present our panel, Snooks? Now, You'll join me over here. We'll tell the audience at home and the audience here in the theater what your line is. Mm. <laughs> All right, panel. We can tell you that Miss Snooks Rourke is self-employed and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. May I call you Snooks? Because we won't know your right name. Yes, call me Snooks. Snooks, does your service have anything to do with food, drink, or sport? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Rourke, is there anything in your job that has any connection with music? No. no. <laughs> now, I will say this in, an, in, in mm. qualification of our answer to Bennett, that while it is true in Snook's case that there is nothing that she does that has any relationship to any one of the areas which you named, uh, it would be true in this general area that somebody else might have something to do with one of those areas. Mr. Lawrence. He's <laughs> Even I'm confused now, so. And no music. Would uh, Snook's, <laughs> would, uh, would I ever use your service? You might. Under the proper set of circumstances, yes, you could require the service. <laughs> no, I don't see that. I take it that you perform the service of not during your school hours, is that right? Yes, that's right. It would be a little different, difficult and to do it, actually. While am, I correct in, am I correct in assuming that it has nothing to do with education? Yes. Uh, do you instruct in any way, shape, or form no. The people that you are... Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> Do you uh, wear pretty much what you're wearing ordinarily when you perform your services? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Do you wear a little bit less than you're wearing ordinarily when you perform your services? <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could you ever perform your services at night? Yes. Are they helpful to people, your service? Yes. I would say that if you came and asked for the service, you would agree that when it had been completed, that it was helpful to you in a degree, yes. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles with most services, isn't it? Aye. Um, well, would you have to have either a baby or a pet of some kind to need your services? 
It is possible that one of the other might be necessary, yes, to the service. In fact, if you had one of the other and you had a particular requirement for this character of service, it would be there and necessary if it was required. In other words, I might be more likely to go to Snooky, is it, or Snooks? Snooks. To Snook. Baby. For her services if I wanted her to do something in behalf of my poodle or something. Is that Your possible? poodle? No. Six down in Fort Agova, Florida. What are you doing after the show, Snooks? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he told you. I think. Uh, no, wait a minute. That was a question. Wait a minute. Put the time back. No, it sucks. I'm going to cut this off. You're getting into dangerous ground. She's a Are babysitter. You're not even. Uh, you can take that. <laughs> And I must say this. Speak for yourself, John. Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, speak for yourself. And Snook can take care of herself because you know what she does? She shoes horses. <laughs> she, uh, she gets $6 for reset, right? Yes, sir. And $8 for new shoes. And she's very busy and she does darn well at it. And the horses like it. And I can understand the horses. Like it. John, it, it seems to me that any girl who could chew a horse could chew a poodle. I think you're right. The trouble is that uh, the shoes are a little big for the poodle. <laughs> but Snooks, we had a wonderful visit with you, and I hope you enjoyed being with us. <laughs> and uh, watch Steve as you go by. <laughs> We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends are always blindfolded, blindfolds in place. Panel? Yes, yes John. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel a different form of questioning one question at a time in turn moving clockwise and we'll begin with uh steve lawrence uh would you would your name appear in the uh, entertainment section of a daily newspaper a big pardon <laughs> what what i think snooks came back <laughs> i didn't hear the answer john i didn't hear the question boy. would you ask the question again mr lawrence I said, would your name appear in the entertainment <laughs> section of the paper? Would your name appear in the entertainment section of the yes, paper? Well, yes, I think that's affirmative. Simon. What's that? Yes. Yes. Miss, Miss Francis? Would it appear primarily in the motion picture sections? Yes, I think you could say that, honey. It would, yes. I, this does not bar other elements. Mr. Sir? Are you at present, or have you in the past few months, appeared in a play on or near Broadway. Yes, honey, I think you could say that's true, too. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. The question was, have you appeared on Broadway in the last three months? It was the in answer. A play? No, no, no. No, that would be a no. One oh, down and no. nine to go, oh, Miss no. Kilgallen. I didn't say the last three months, pictures. John. I said oh, recently. Just... I thought you said in the last three months. I said then. on or, or near Broadway recently. You're, you're confused. Uh, yeah, so what do you mean by recently? I'm going back. Last three years? Last three, well, last six months. <laughs> <laughs> no, one down a night ago, Miss Gilgallan. Are you a romantic leading man? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, tell the world. Laura? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Could be any one of the boys. It certainly could. <laughs> uh, do you have a picture of... Uh, 
Did someone ask if there was a picture on currently playing? No. Is there a picture of yours currently playing on Broadway? Yep, yep. There's, there's one there now. It's a big success. Miss Francis? Did he say yes? Yes. Yeah. Yep, there's two there now. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds doddering, but I know that's not true. <laughs> Are you the man that gets the girl for the most part? You bet your life, honey. <laughs> what? Do you think you know, Arlie? No, I don't. All right, Bennett? As the as the last as the last picture that you made included any musical numbers? Uh, yes, quite a few. Yes, Miss Kilgallen. And I have a beautiful voice too. <laughs> Did you ever you drop your address book out of a helicopter? Did you ever drop your address book out of a helicopter? No, I don't think so, honey. Two dollars and eight to go. I keep that. It's pretty bad. Has anybody got an idea? Did you appear no. in, a, in a motion picture with Doris Day? Yes, yes, I mean, you're right. Yes. Was the picture Jumbo? No. No, I'm going to put all the cards over. Is it a or an no. elephant? I'm going to put all the cards over because you're not getting close. You want to take a walk? Take two guesses. Anybody got an idea? Rock you, Hudson. No, it's Bob Cummings. What a job he did with that voice. I thought sure he'd get it because I we should have known this because dinosaur one time, Grandpa. Yeah, that's right. But I should have known. known. Yeah, I'm almost that old too. <laughs> and actually, Bob is about to be our neighbor, which is a great break for us. You're going to be on from 9:30 to 10. That's right. Next month we go on with the Living Doll. With the Living Doll, it's going to be on from 9:30 to 10 before uh, Candy Cameron, and we're going to be on. I was I once opposite you on the air, and it was a very uncomfortable spot for me. Yeah. <laughs> but as I was going to say, what a way to go. What that way was to go the here. picture we were talking yeah, about. Bob, thanks a lot. Thank you Why very much. Wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. I should have known. Thank you. I should have known. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you've been uh, having a rough time tonight, panel, but I think we've had a lot of fun, so I congratulate you on that, and we'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. Well, panel, I must admit, you may have had a tough time tonight, but we've had a lot of fun, and good night, Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Stay cool, Steve. Thank you, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. I don't care how you stay, just stay. <laughs> good night, Bennett. Gee, we're worse than the vets tonight. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> Do you think that's a nice thing to say, Bennett, about the Mets? Well, they're, they're nice to watch. It's fun to watch losers once in a while. <laughs> okay, so I hope people go. think that's nice. <laughs> well, that's one thing about the, the New Yorkers, at least. They love their Mets up or down, and unfortunately, they're not as hope up as much as we would like us. them to. <laughs> but thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson reminding you, if you'd like to attend one of our broadcasts, write to What's My Line, CBS TV, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022. The preceding program was pre-recorded.